If Roe v. Wade is overturned, laws further restricting abortion care and services will go into effect in many states. Following the leak of the draft Supreme Court opinion in which the justices appear ready to overturn Roe, we asked you what questions you had for our experts about abortion care and access in the U.S. Many of you wrote and wanted to know more about the impact this decision could have on hospitals. To answer those questions, we reached out to Kristen Brandy, an OBGYN and family planning doctor, who is also the board chair for Physicians for Reproductive Health, and NPR health policy correspondent Selena simmons Duffin. Miscarriage care is definitely going to be impacted, it's already happening in Texas. A lot of times people think about miscarriage as something that's spontaneous, that somebody has no control over. That can be true, but it can also be something that people have to make decisions about. The standard of care for treating miscarriage is the same as the standard of care for providing an abortion. The way that can play out is if somebody has a miscarriage and they need to take medication to empty the uterus so they're not at risk of infection, that same medication is what's used for medication abortion. There have already been a lot of reports of pharmacists in Texas not filling those prescriptions for people who are suffering miscarriages. There's nothing in these laws that says if Terry's the miscarriage somebody has to prove it. But there are reports, including one from a woman in Texas, about doctors questioning patients about medications they might have taken or how they might have caused a miscarriage to happen. In practical terms, getting the right treatment, on time, without barriers or questioning, might still end up being really challenging. So Lena Simmons stuff in the question of whether somebody will die from pregnancy is rarely black and white. Restrictive abortion laws often have exemptions for medical emergencies that require treatment that might involve ending a pregnancy. There are about 700 pregnancy deaths a year in the U.S., according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. A third of those deaths are from heart disease and stroke. But, under these new restrictions, if you develop a condition like preeclampsia early in pregnancy, which could put you at high risk for a stroke, the exemption wouldn't necessarily apply. You may have to continue the pregnancy despite the risks. One very urgent medical situation that can come up is when someone's water breaks too early, 